please explain to everyone what is radical economic transformation. Wow. So I, I can't believe you just went into it. There's like just no, like that. No yeah. warm up. No. no. Uh, no. I did the whole stables thing and everything. Yeah. Right? <laughs> My view is that we need to start first with the basics. So maybe just to give you a bit of context, Rian. One mm. of the things we did in this country just after, and this is not, one of the things we did in this country just after '96, after we passed the laws around black economic empowerment, which is a necessary and I fully support piece of legislation was in the transfer of share equity, which put main, went, went predominantly to politically connected people, we created a class of, of, of capital, a capitalist class of people who owned 26% of companies that they hadn't played a role in building, either as employees or as owners and shareholders. So as a result, you created a narrative of instant gratification. Yeah, quick right. wealth. Right, mm. which is was not the intended consequence, and I fully appreciate that. But as a res- what's happened since is it's now hard to find, it's more difficult to find people who are competent, able, and are willing to take the long-term view in building businesses. Amen. So my view was, and continues to be, that rather than rather than go through that process again, what we need to do is to focus on a more long-term sustainable model of building black businesses. This is, it's what I do is I invest and find black businesses. But I, my premise is that we've got to start first with the basics, right? So, so my view was, I'll give you an example. I come from a township called Watville in Benoni. Right next door to it is another township called Actonville. Actonville is predominantly an Indian area, particularly Muslim Indians. And Watville is predominantly black African. Watville has probably about eight times the population of Actonville. But Actonville has a multiple the wealth of Watville. Mm. Uh, the question is why, right? And, and the real answer to that is because in the predominantly Indian area, the Indians started franchises or businesses with a premise of understanding what real wealth was. Real wealth is, is ownership, right? So, so they would start a bit. So the grandfather, for instance, would start a hardware store, and then a generation later, he would leave the hardware store to his son, mm. who would augment it with a with a fast food joint next door. A generation later, which would be the current generation, the son and the father have now left the current son or the yeah. daughter, say, a another business which might be a dry cleaner, yeah. right? So you three generations down, three generations in, three generations of cash flow generation, mm. and three generations of businesses in. Mm. Now. I don't argue, and nobody can, that we come from a past in this country where it was frankly illegal for black people to own businesses. My grandfather, for instance, started his puzzle shop in 74, three years before Whitey Besson started ShopRite. Mm. Greatest of respect for Whitey Besson, but the only difference between Whitey and my father was Whitey was the right skin color. Oh, mm. my grandfather was, it was, it was a white skin color. Exactly. <laughs> that said, that said, I don't want to take 26% of Whitey's company because I don't think that's all I'm capable of. I think I'm capable of creating another shop, right? Amen. Oh, I love that. At the heart of it is, so if you want to fix black entrepreneurship, fix entrepreneurship. The black Ooh. part will emerge. Ooh, well said. Sure. 721. You're just like a quotable man. Mm. And he Ish. looks so good in his beautiful jacket. <laughs> He's, Tim Choir, people love you, man. I'm just seeing all those likes coming through. Global business speaker and entrepreneur. Listen, you, you, you put it very eloquently. You were talking about boxes that uh, people need to tick. Um... If you're an entrepreneur, these are the boxes you need to tick if you want to be an entrepreneur. Right. Mm. You want to know what the boxes are? That's a belief. So the first box that says know, know your product better than anybody else. Um, this, the second box is make sure that you understand the commercial part of your business better than anybody else. Because the, once you know that there is a gap in the market, you've got to make sure there's a market in the gap. So many people will find the gap and then just go and yeah. then don't think about, but can I monetize this thing sustainably? And, and the third part, and this is important, is make sure that you can do this thing and be competitive regardless of, of any other extenuating factors or circumstances. Yeah. So you shouldn't do it because you are a female or yeah. because you are black or because you are in South Africa. Yeah. You should do it because you're good and you're the best Love it. business. Now, I want to I wanna just get to a point here because at some point, on <clears throat> we both were on similar journeys at some point and then you just skyrocketed and I sort of went in another direction. I'll give you, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. We both had a passion for public speaking. Right. I ended up sitting behind a microphone. You right. ended up being a multimillionaire. <laughs> so now I'm just trying to see where things went wrong for me. So at some point you were a public speaker right. and then what? Then what? Yeah, I mean, so I understood fairly fairly early on that public speaking is probably the single most important leadership tenet. Yeah. Think about any leader that has influenced direction has not been good at public speaking one the second thing i understood was that public speaking gave me huge exposure to some of the world's most powerful people 
what I needed to figure out was how do I exploit that exposure for beneficial use for me and for them. So once I'd worked that out, then it just became about, so what are you passionate about? What do you want to do? And how do you use this thing called public speaking to enable you? So starting my venture capital fund, for instance, for me was easy because once I did, I had a Rolodex of some of the world's most influential people that I could get on the phone with who go. trusted me uh -huh. and who trusted that I would do the job because when they pulled me in as a public speaker, I delivered. I just want to make a quick point, Rand, because this is important. Never take for granted the small beginnings mm. and be very, if you're a cleaner, be the best at it. Like if you're a receptionist, kill it at your job because what happens when you deliver it small things is you give people uh credibility equity to trust you with the bigger things most people go well i'm going to be mediocre at this because i'm busy working towards the other thing don't do that mm -hmm. the other thing is a result of the small things you do come on just if you start small and if you're good at the small the big things come naturally hi this is for september wire rockstar venture capitalist so i thought i'd share with you three quick tips to take into consideration when starting your own business the first tip is don't write a business plan just don't waste your time don't write it don't go through the process don't even consider it the most important part of starting a business is the start so what you've got to do is once you've figured out there's something you're thinking about or something you'd like to do is to start testing it if you want to start selling chappies at a street corner buy some chappies and start selling them if you want to start supplying a certain company with something buy the stock and then go and start supplying them don't go through the process of writing the document until you've tested something and you kind of understand what's happening in the market because once you start writing the business plan you have context and broader knowledge that's the first thing the second thing is to remember always and this is the most critical thing for people starting businesses to remember there's a big difference between being self-employed and being an entrepreneur being self-employed means even though you work for yourself you never have freedom because you work 18 hours a day and if you're not in the business there is no business if you really want to be an entrepreneur upfront as you start your business you've got to start thinking about how do I replace myself in the most important parts of the business so how do I get somebody to do the sales and I can manage them somebody to do the finances and I manage them somebody to do the marketing and I manage them that's really the difference between being self-employed and entrepreneurship and those three those two are not the same thing and the third and probably the most important tip I can give you is always do something that's important to you and something you feel passionate about and the reason for that and I'm sure you've heard it before it sounds quite fluffy but the reason for that is simply this there are often times in the early days of the business where the only thing that's going to feed you is the passion because there is no money the clients pay too late the suppliers want their money up front your costs are always higher than your income and you've got almost important costs that you've got to pay up front salaries rentals etc whilst you're earning the money much later on and so enjoying what you do and loving what you do is often going to be the only important thing that keeps you doing what you do so always make sure you do something that's close to heart and not necessarily something that you understand or something that you think you can do purely because there is a market potential if it's close to heart and take it from experience you're going to keep doing it for much much longer i wish you well in your business journey and remember if it was easy everyone would do